Hi, 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 hi. Thank you for choosing us again. This is Prime Morning. We are live on Joy Prime Television. So this morning, I woke up and I look at myself in the mirror and I realized that, okay, in the last three months, I could really finish a ball of kinky and even add half. And then I'm asking, is it me or is just a ball of kinky becoming smaller? Uh, even if you're a foreigner in this country, you wouldn't need some sort of economics or just regular Ghanaian. You don't need some economics to understand that cost of living has really, really gone high. This morning, we want to touch base with you. It's public knowledge, but we really want to touch base with you that how are you keeping it all together? Have you discovered some formula that you are able to manage your way? Are you able to manage how much you earn? Just opposing it to how much you need to spend in a day, a week, or a month. And so we'll have a good conversation. I'd appreciate your comments, your thoughts on Twitter, hashtag Prime Morning, and even on Facebook at Joy Prime Television. Now, this morning, I'm joined by two gentlemen in the studio. We have a woman who is a teacher, Madame Rose, joining us a little later via Zoom. But I'm pleasured to have Mr. Vincent Jokuto. He's an entrepreneur, especially. I would get into what he does, particularly CEO of DKT, and also a blog. He will take us on a journey of what people have been seeing on social media so we can compare what's been happening last year, last two years, and even this year. Then again, a group of people that have a major concern, the youth. We've got the youth activist. He's also a graduate. We've got Peter Kofi Kelson Akins joining me. We're having a great conversation even before we came on. Uh, Madame Rose Blankson will join us, and also Edu Boyan will join us a little later. So I promise that this will be good. You can send in your questions, your comments, also on 0551 My name is Emma Fakusi Aditi Vincent. Akins, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Absolute pleasure. Great. So let me go to uh, Peter. Peter, so you're a graduate. How long ago have you been a graduate? In just a year. Just a year. And uh, how are you finding it being a graduate and being a student? Which one would you prefer? Of course, if you're a student, you are <laughs> maybe at the mercy of the rest of society get regular stipends, your parents are more concerned about your cost of living. More especially because you're a student, you are under the direct utility of your parents. You have to uh, get the books to study, you have to feed, you you need stipends for transportation and etc. So it's quite different when you complete school. Mm. That is when you are struck with the reality. You understand that uh, life out there is not as easy, it's not as compared as it is in school. So usually when you're in school, you're advised to and develop a skill, either a skill in form of communication, it could be in business, it could be in media practice, it mm. could be anything. Okay, so give me a minute. I'll come back. We'll pick up on this. Vincent, before you set the tone, mm. we went to, we, 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 we spoke to a woman or we found a woman mm. who went to the market and uh, realized that whatever she had on here was not enough for what she had projected to spend mm. before we come back to the trends and even understand what's happening with Akins. Let's take a watch. You can't even buy clothes for yourself. Buy a nice things for yourself. The money you get, you have to use to buy food. When she came, Oba was 45 cents, right? But today it's 90 cents. Every day, Bia, you're too amount. has been roaming the Makula market all morning, desperately trying to get the best price deals. Where will I get onions at a cheaper price? She came to the market with a price list based on her last shopping activity. Unfortunately, virtually every item on her list has become more expensive. Every time I come to the market, there is always an increase. Now I always have to top up. Her budget of 1,000 Ghana cities cannot buy all the items she needs. So she goes to the nearest mobile money vendor to cash out some money to make up for the difference. The surging food prices 
are hurting the finances of many homes. For Frida, 90% of the family's income now goes into only food. You can't even buy clothes for yourself. Buy nice things for yourself. The money you get, you have to use to buy food. That's the only thing we are doing in the house. It's only food we think at the end of the day because if you don't have the food, the kids will worry you. And everybody knows that will know that you don't have. So when you have the little that money you have, you have to use to buy rice, oil and those things. So that it will be okay. Frida explains that to live within her budget, she had had to cut out snacks of her family budget and redesign her family meal plan to keep food on the table. This, I think last week my children didn't send a snack to school. Now this is what I'm doing. And maybe this week we won't take sugar. We will balance it with maybe pineapple juice and bread for breakfast. Like we are doing subtraction and yeah, that's what we are doing in the house. Because if I don't do that and I say, oh, I'll give them whatever they want. Uh, it's not going to be easy for us, yes. Even my husband was thinking like, he will pack his car and take petrol to work because he works at Tema and in a week he buy petrol like 900 Ghana. How much is his pay? You understand? Uh -huh. So it's not easy. Since last week, my children have never sent snack to school. But I used to buy it for them. But because there is no money and the, the things have been increased, we need to do subtraction and addition. Cooking oil vendors are agitated because of the rising prices. Every day, yeah, yeah, two a man. Every day, yeah. Now we, we, aye ten cities. We, aye eight cities. Every day, the prices of cooking oil goes up. The sunflower, it used to be sold for ten cities so, and vegetable oil was eleven cities. But now, it has risen to nineteen and twenty-one cities respectively. Every day, two. Frida hinted that she had a particular vendor whose prices are reasonable, so we followed her. To her utmost surprise, goods here too had gone up. Oh, it's like what do not call Jamie or by no Jamie. If I am, she will last in it. Oh, fine, I will fight. I mean, I see, I find a fight. Davi came from the Volta region to get spaghetti rice and some spices. But she had to leave without the item because the money she came with is grossly inadequate. Next week, come over, monthly uh, 48. So she's trying to say last week when she came, Oba was 45 cities, right? But today it's 90 cities, which means the price is very high. So since the price is high, she can buy it. If you have enough money, buy groceries in bulk because day in day out prices keep soaring and each man for himself we say fix the country right so uh we're back on air and uh peter we you've watched uh this very Ghanaian woman that's how my mother would go <laughs> to the market to shop expecting that she'd have everything she wants on budget i was trying to compare the time that you're a student the time that you're a grow you're, you're graduate now i mean you were saying that's quite comfortable because you get some stipends mm. and all of that but still you were shopping were you not Yes. If you're giving the money, whether you're the one making the money or not, you are still shopping at that time. Exactly. And shopping now, which which is more difficult now? Shopping now, because comparatively, it is quite evidential that inflation has risen up above the rule by about 23.6%. That is quite unimaginable. Mm. Um, over the past 17 to 18 years, I mean, we've been able to break that record. And there is quite a difficult time in the life of the ordinary Ghanaian. It appears that you need an extra arm or leg hmm. to be able to survive in this economy. Hmm. Why do I say this? Uh, you would agree with me that there has been several attempts to relate this with the Ukraine-Russian war. Yes, of course. We do import about 50% of, um, of is it, is it, is it flour, yeah, flour yeah. from Queen Russia, doing about 30% of grain from Russia. 
you are, you are doing. Don't about, forget vodka. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and all of these from these countries. Now, what has had to do with government's intervention in all of these fields? Uh, we're here in this country, government made a promise to mm -hmm. introduce a new agricultural model that was going to feed the country. And if I say feed the country, I'm talking about sustain the country even in times of difficulties, in a time of shortage and etc. And so, expectedly, these projects carried out by government were supposed to have a certain effect or impact on the economy, even in a time of crisis. Unfortunately, we have not seen this. Now, I talk about planting for food and jobs. That has been a total flash in the pan, I mean, in the eyes of Ghanaians. And so you ask yourself this. Now, bread has to cost more than, I mean, half of its price, yeah. simply because we are importing a quantum of flour from, from Russia. And bread is, I mean, made from wheat. We talk about the fact that grains, wheat, and et cetera. These are things that literally could have planted them in this country. We talk about the price of maize. And, 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 and maize, maize uh, directly influences the prices of common because largely the typical traditional Ghanaian, I mean, certain or home, mm. has had to, one, or the, one way or the other, consume maize as part of their daily delicacies okay. and et cetera. So it is quite difficult. And how shocking it is, is the fact that if you look at the other African economies, I mean, Ghana has a certain feature or characteristic to about 23 of other African economies that you can see that have similar features. Now, Ghana is struggling at the bottom with countries like Zimbabwe, that is doing an inflation of about 96%. Sudan, that is about negative eight. Um, you are talking about countries that have been in the ditch. And now you have to consider Ghana in the same bracket. And that is what makes it quite unfortunate. In the life would of work, the ordinary Ghanaian. We'll work our way uh, to what has caused it. I'll okay. come back to what you studied in school, okay. how easy or difficult it has been. But Vincent, talk to me as an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. also as uh, somebody who's very familiar in, in the social media mm -hmm. terrain. For, uh, for an entrepreneur, DKT, what do you do particularly? Well, DKT Joko to Onko is a boutique management consulting firm. Okay. Uh, we tend to deal with a much more elite clientele with respect to high net worth individuals, government, a little bit of um, strategy for business as well. Okay. And so that's uh, our practice in a summary. Okay. Do you deal with some form of suppliers? Do you, do you have to go into some sort of purchases and raw materials, anything like that? Or is purely consultancy? <laughs> Well, absolutely. Consultancy would stretch um, across a broad number of expertise. And so naturally, we do tend to have experience with people who are involved in such sectors, especially in the import, in, in the import sector, for example. OK, OK. Um, but your findings as a mm. blogger, what, what, what's happening on social media, specifically regarding high cost of living? Well, directly from the point of view of the average Ghanaian family, what is clear is that they can't quite afford to feed their households, keep up with the cost of gas and electricity. Um, and that, there's a very simple reason for that. Mm. Wage growth has failed to keep up to pace with the rampant inflation. What is that? Well, basically speaking, uh, from the point of view of the fact that you do have the prices going up, salaries are not quite matching up. As a result, Ghanaians can't save, and people have to borrow themselves into substantial debt. Okay, okay. Which one do you enjoy? Gain on social media or being an entrepreneur now, particularly? Well, between 2023 to one and 2022. I, I, think, I think both both are intertwined. Social media has just um, more or less decentralized the power mm. um, that perhaps only a few institutions had and now allows us to directly reach um, a demographic that ordinarily we may not have been able to touch base with. Okay. And uh, these findings of how people are not able to uh, earn how much they're spending, mm. was it the same in 2021? I ask because 2020, you know, trickle now with COVID and all the challenges into 2021, mm. your findings as of 2021 and this year, is it very different? Well, fuel is much more setting to rise than the sun is. <laughs> and what, and okay. what inflation does, especially from the point of an entrepreneur, is in as much as you have, you know, the employees who form the backbone of every organization, mm. rightfully demanding salaries, there's a much bigger problem of planning. It's difficult to project when prices are on the rise, particularly, you know, given the kind of situation we find ourselves in. Mm. It also becomes very difficult to invest 
when you're not quite sure what may tweak some of these factors and what your returns may be, especially for a firm like us that prefers low risk, um, high return businesses. Okay. I'm quite curious about you as a person. Mm. I'd come to you, your favorite food, how much it's costing <laughs> and all of that. But uh, Peter, so what did you study in school? Well, I did sociology. Okay. And uh, sociology uh, was the end game for it. Well, and so I have an inspiration in public policy yeah, to further to do public policy. So that is what I really want to specialize in. And so definitely um, first degree is just a foundational block to what you want your future to be. Yeah. Okay. And um, a year ago and now, how easy or difficult has it been for you to uh, get a job? A year ago? Yes, of course. You, You've been a graduate for a year. So yeah, exactly. I mean, how easy or difficult? You, you, you admit fairly that the state of you know, graduate unemployment mm. is really a serious issue in the country as of now. Youth have had to um, face the stark reality of how difficult it is to come even up with a job. You know, I spoke about entrepreneurship even before the program did start. Mm. You might have the most brilliant, the most outstanding of an idea, but then you need a certain push. You need a certain system that is able to support mm. a business growth. Unfortunately, we do not have the climate as of now. Vincent is a business person. He mm. spoke about the fact that it's hard to be difficult to even invest in the current economy because clearly, whenever there is inflation, the value of money erodes. And so even starting as a graduate of an entrepreneurial idea is quite difficult to live with. You know, I have colleagues who currently are doing national service. I did my national service last year. The national service, I mean, obviously everybody wants to remain in this country to contribute to individual quota to development. Okay. And I'm really committed to that. Okay. Vincent, let's go to mm. um, Cape Coast. Let's talk to Madame Rose. So she's a teacher. Uh, hi, Madame Rose. Hi, Madam Rose, do you hear me? Okay, Hi, well, MFA, good morning. Uh, good morning, thank you for joining us on Prime Morning. So tell me, how long thank have you been you a teacher? Me. Yes, but um, a point of correction, I, I am no longer a teacher. I okay. left the teaching field less than a year. Why? Don't uh, tell me well, the economy. Not for any particular <laughs> reason, but I wanted to explore more opportunities, you know, to impact better. Okay, so, is this to say that you're unable yeah. to impact as a teacher? I said to impact better. Better. <laughs> so, I impact as a teacher. I haven't taught for um, over 20 years. Oh, great. I left okay. training college in 1998. Okay. So, okay. so that's I just felt, about a year you know, ago since you stopped being a teacher. Yes, just less than about a year ago. Okay, but well, I would so, say November last year, so even not up to six months. Oh, great. Then it's still good that I talked to you. So at the time that you were a teacher, would you say that you were earning fairly enough to take care of yourself and your family? Um, honestly, MFA, uh, nobody um, in Ghana, no civil servant or public servant in Ghana, uh, speaking truthfully, would say that our earning from the government takes us even to the junction of our homes, mm. not to talk of taking us home. Um, it's never been, and I, I doubt it ever will be. Okay. Um, I haven't been a teacher, a parent, uh, not only to my children, but other children. Um, I felt it, I've, I've, I've done so many things just to survive. Apart from being in the classroom, teaching regularly, uh, most of us teachers were doing extra classes, going to people's homes to teach children private time. Um, I personally had to support myself with being a taxi driver. Yourself? Um, a long time. Yes. Okay. And I dare say I was the first female taxi driver in Cape Coast. <laughs> a lot of people get surprised when I talk about it. But I had a taxi with the inscription Ochesu, meaning Providence. Okay. And yes, and when school closed, if I don't have any classes, I honestly didn't enjoy that post school classes. That's the extra classes. Mm. Because I was like, if I've given you enough in the classroom, why do I have to go the extra mile after school 
to keep you, to teach you more. So I didn't really get involved in the extra classes. That is not the regular school extra classes, but the personal individual extra classes. But I was a taxi driver. Um, I had to prepare ice cream cake to sell. Mm. I had to do so below liquid soap. As we speak, I'm still into beading. I do bead work, um, other things. We mark, we teach um, on the distance program, do some invigilation, do some marking here and there. And this is all because you were unable to earn enough as a teacher to take care of yourself and your family. This is it? Not only as a teacher. And I, you see, a lot of the times we want to zero it in on the teacher. Mm. Yes, the teacher is usually not fairly treated. The pay is quite poor. But it's not only the teacher. Almost all public servants and civil servants don't earn enough to take care of their families. That woman who said the husband is planning to pack her ve his vehicle mm. to board trot trot to and fro Tema. Mm. I don't think the husband is a teacher. I doubt. A civil servant or a public servant or probably working with some private entity somewhere. We are not paid well everywhere. But probably it, it, it might not be the fault of anyone. I, I wouldn't want to say that someone has decidedly, uh, you know, taken pains to see people suffer. Okay, Auntie Rose, so let me, let me talk to you as the bead maker then. It means that you're in some form of entrepreneurship or some form of business currently. Yes, perfectly. Okay. So, I do that alongside my official work. Okay, great. And so currently, how is the cost of living impacting on that particular side of business for you? I mean, if someone is thinking about what to eat, you go to the market, <laughs> sardines that you bought three days ago was four cities, 60 pesos. Mm. You go the next day and it is five cities, 50 pesos. You don't want to wear jewelry, you know, except when you have something extra. So mm. the demand is very low. Okay. Is it's this, very low. Is this forcing you to want to uh, rethink the type of business that you're running? Hmm. For now, honestly, time is not really on my side. Where I've branched into is a 7.30 to 4.30 plus week. Hmm. Unlike when it was 7.30 to 2.30 week. So time is not really on my side to be exploring too many things. And I think I've, I've done enough. I've, I've, I've grown and I need to relax a bit, not to. The children, the last one is in the university first year. So I think I don't need to really stress myself so much. And the young people have groomed and trained with these skills, how to prepare spring rolls, crunchies, liquid soap, soap below ice cream cake, beads and all that. I, I feel they should also take it up because okay. if we continue uh, to take the market, mm. we will not be fair to them. Oh, that's really something. Yeah. the market to be choked, and they won't get the opportunity to. <laughs> even um, even in this uh, level of standard of living, you don't you don't mind? You don't want to take a little bit of that income? I am. Well, I take a little bit of that. Okay. That's why I said I'm not. I'm not fully into it like I used to be. Okay. I mean, those days. Um, the, even my break time, you see me preparing dashboard tissue box. Okay. You see me preparing some wristbands. I mean, conscientiously. Okay. But now I've decided to, you know, it's difficult. But hey, I I have decided to even say that I'm dieting so that um, I cut down my meals. I used to buy these packed fruit juices. Mm -hmm. I love fruit juices a lot. So I used to buy the packed ones mm -hmm. in cartons and then I keep them a day. I can drink one or more boxes, but I stopped. I prepare them at home. I buy my pineapples, cut it. I mean, I have my secret recipe, cut it, do whatever I have to do. And the way I do it, it can be in the fridge for over a month. And that's cheaper. And that's far, far, far cheaper. If I buy 20 cities worth of pineapples, mm. I can take it for more than two weeks. Okay. okay. I mean, I get 
big bottles of the juices for more than two weeks. Okay, so if I understand you, you are finding ways and means, you know, to uh, uh, survive. I mean, working your way from as a teacher to driving to all the other skills that you've had to apply yourself to. So you're finding your ways. Then, I mean, what would be your expectations from government then? Well, um, the expectation is that um, there should be some improvement in remuneration. Okay. Um, the economy is hard. I mean, things, prices of goods and services have escalated. Fuel prices, I mean, consumables and everything have escalated. But the salary is still the same. There is this cartoon of um, every item growing bigger and, you know, huge. And the salary keeps dwindling. And um, that's unfortunate. Um, if governments can cushion um, staff a bit, mm -hmm. if employers can cushion their employees a bit, I think it, it will really help. Because if that doesn't help, uh, if that doesn't come up, mm. huh, it will be difficult for most of us, if not all Ghanaians. I'm not saying things are not difficult for me. Things are difficult for me. I mean, my son called me um, from school. He's in the university first year, and he says, Mommy, um, can you add a little to my stipend? Then I said, why should I do that? Said, well, the items I bought yesterday, today I went to buy the same thing, and it's a little more expensive. Hmm. I was like, oh, really? I knew it, but I pretended I didn't know. And <laughs> definitely I had to add to the stipends. So if, for example, you are giving your son 150, you have to give about 180 or 200. It's not the child's fault. It's not your fault. But where are you going to get that extra from? Your employer must cushion you a bit. Thank you so much, Madam Rose Blankton. Thank you for sharing this uh, experience with us here on Prime Morning. And do have a good day. Vincent. Thank you very much. And have a good day, so too. So there's high expectations from, I mean, if I just went to Peter right now to ask for expectations, you say, oh, government should do that, government. Is it the case that government knows what to do and they're not doing it or they're just unable to? Well, clearly, some policy measures that have taken place have been quite adverse to the average entrepreneur. I believe women like Rose Blankson capture with perfect accuracy the kind of entrepreneurial spirit and determination that the average household um, is trying to sustain in order to roll against the currents where we really find ourselves. Mm. Now, um, to answer your question, when you have a situation where, for example, an electronic transaction levy has been imposed, um, on the mass of our people who are currently trying to um, tolerate the economic, um, you know, sort of dire situation that is that you know that's come to ruin a lot of enterprises. It sort of lowers the incentive for hard work. Taxes have always historically done two things: it's going to stifle innovation mm -hmm. and it's going to discourage entrepreneurship. And so I believe we haven't, even though I do favour a minimum intervention of a government in a free market, which explains why I'm probably um, in disagreement with the electronic transaction levy, um, I believe that one of the reasons why we have found it so difficult to offset the economic toll is that the widespread sentiment is the Ministry of Finance perhaps um, borrowed a little bit irresponsibly and spent rather recklessly. And so you find out that as far as international markets is concerned as well, it goes back to the basic issue of investors' confidence. How do we get our um, economy on the move again? Mm. One thing that the current um, cost of living crisis has exposed has also been our reliance on auxiliary forces. We okay. quite clearly haven't been able to harness our domestic economy in the way in which um, it can you know, guide us through times like this where we can rely on indigenous um, goods and services. And so that's been a matter of difficulty. Okay. Okay. But is that not why the government mm. uh, had to impose the taxes? They said that it's one of the easiest way to, you know, gather some revenue because they've been explaining that uh, the existing mode of collecting tax, not too many people are in the, shall I say, formal sector for them to be able to collect so collection has been difficult so they decided to widen it up is it is it not a good step in the right direction i'll stay with you well, well firstly i don't think it's quite um 
the position that Ghanaians are opposed to tax taxes. Mm. What it is, is Ghanaians have issues when it comes to accountability. People do not necessarily see where that kind of cash is going to and how it leads to active um, development. But from a different school of thought, in times like this, one would assume the government would want us to have more disposable income um, so that households and enterprises would be able to independently um, assert themselves financially and solve some of these issues head on. Um, so in as much as there tends to be the notion that people place a dependence um, on, on government, the sort of reaction we've seen to you know, new um, taxes coming out um, suggests very clearly that Ghanaians are ready to take matters into their own hands, right. are ready to do their bit as far as their diligence um, is, is, is concerned and only just need a very favorable environment to ensure that happens. Peter, how much do you, do you spend in a day? I'm curious, as a, as a graduate, how much? And how much would you rather spend if that's not enough? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I cannot, I cannot guess an accurate figure how much you spend mm. in a day because you go to the market and uh, prices are fluctuating. Do you here go to the there. market yourself? Yes, I go to the market myself. Or particularly do you go shopping? Right. So I love to explore, you know, um, all needs around Legon, and sometimes okay. Medina Market too. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But how are you putting body? How are you holding your body and soul together? You know, it does <laughs> appear that it does appear that to sleep and wake up, and go about your daily activities, you need a miracle. Really? Exactly. Because we heard a woman talk about the fact that she has to go through, I mean, thick and thin, to be able to make up for the family. Imagine, imagine that this woman was a single mother. How is she able to put herself up together mm. to be able to survive in this situation? Now, I talked about government responsibility about this. Now, I would agree with Vincent that the people have lost some sort of confidence in government. You're talking about debt to GDP ratio expected to hit a mark of about 85% as mm. predicted by the IMF. Now, people do not have confidence in the kind of expend each other, the kind of use of resources the government has done over the past years. Uh, public debt from 2016 to now has ballooned to about I think, 350 billion Ghana cities thereabout and expected to jump over 400 billion by the end of the year. If the people think that government has borrowed monies and it has not judiciously used these resources, it raises a lot of questions about government's competence oh. to fix the economy. And so that is a problem. Then again, in the face of crisis, deep crisis of the ordinary Ghanaian and what the ordinary Ghanaian has got to face each and every day, mm. the government has gone ahead to insensitively implement their regressive e-levy. I mean, how, 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 how painful, I mean, it is to realize that Ghanaians are suffering, prices of goods and services are escalating. And you go to, you know, tax the basic point of transaction, what, what people have to do to be able to redraw or deposit money each and every day. You know what that causes? Now, the telcos, due to their ingenuity, have been able to put, I mean, it could be more, more than 100,000 people on the streets as Momo vendors. Mm. These are no opportunities that were provided by government. Somebody's ingenuity, somebody's... Um, 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 excellence or brilliance mm. Mm. to do that now you're you're i mean these these vendors have had to find themselves in situations where they have to also bear the rippling effect of e-levy now if you had to transact about 500 ghana cities a day this time around you are not getting to transact that same amount and remember these people survive based on commissions and so if your income, if your income level would improve, definitely it would be about the number or quantum of transactions that go on each and every day. And so if the number of transactions are reducing, you realize that your income or your expected revenue would mm. also be reducing. And that makes it difficult for the ordinary Ghanaian on the street. And so across Momo vendors, Fisher Fox, drivers, and even we talk about the fact that transportation has well even got to increase by 80% yeah. from January to date and prices of other petroleum components, lubricants and you know, all of those things but that people sell at Abusio Kai. That's not determined by the government anyway. No, de yeah. de definitely. But you, you've got to also talk about the fact that there are also taxes on fuel. That has mm. made it difficult for you know, people, I mean drivers, to maintain the prices of you know, what you call transport fares, simply because they have argued, mm. argued 
emphatically that if governments can work on the fuel prices by reducing certain obnoxious taxes on it, it will be able to cushion the ordinary Ghanaian. Did, did you hear how much the president said we'll lose if we, if we skip that? About four, four, four million? No, 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 so. but, 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 no but wait, mm. I'm, I'm coming. Uh, uh, uh -huh. no, so four billion. What has government gotten so? Government has gotten more than um, 200 billion over the past So they should use that. <laughs> what have they done with it? Vincent, what's your favorite meal? Do you eat kinke? I, I eat banku and tilapia hey. religiously, <laughs> and I much, much rather prefer akpla. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, so still with tilapia. Absolutely. Hey, but how much is tilapia? When was the last time you had tilapia? Well, it, as regularly as, as I can. As regular. So yes, did you have absolutely. tilapia yesterday? Well, you know, that's that's. Please, how much is how much did you get it? it depends, and where? It, it depends on the size. I I've got a brilliant spot at a hidden corner in Newtown that gives me the most sumptuous tilapia you can find. And is this standard price? Has, it, has the price changed from 2021 20 to 21? The size has changed. <laughs> <laughs> the size has changed. Okay. But look, Emma, for what it is, is it doesn't really matter if you're at a plush rooftop bar swilling champagne or if you're at your favorite, you know, tabletop tilapia joint somewhere in Anyako. Mm. Um, the, the one message that runs through all of it is that Ghana is boiling. Yeah. Right. And... Um, when one reaches a point where, especially for young people, the whole technological advancement is being, um, you know, you know, um, distracted by, by, by taxes, where, you know, it's a, it's a popular platform for people um, holding their businesses and moving those ideas forward. And when you realize that the cost of data itself has become such mm. an arbitrage around mm. micro you use a lot people, of data, don't you? Well, well yeah. certainly. I, yeah. think, I think the new generation, the future of our public is largely um, going to be de dependent on access to the Change. internet mm. and, and, and that kind of infrastructure, which is why, um, once more, just not to exactly hit too hard on the electronic transaction levy, it is um, directly opposed to the sort of values that you might find um, in a much younger demographic only because it discourages that transition towards technological okay. advancement. I'm nearly wrapping up, but I want to see which one of these increments would shock you, Peter, mm. as a graduate, and you as a business owner, and even somebody who's very familiar on social media. Mm. So it says that. So have you seen the... See, I'm concerned about the size of the kinky. <laughs> you know, the price is not killing me like the size. Like this one, because it means I would have to eat about three of it. Well, you know. Yeah, my stomach is not looking like that, but it's that busy. <laughs> so it's so from twenty to twenty one, a ball of kinky was I mean one CD sometimes you're finding one CD fifty pesos, but it's got hundred percent increment and it's two CDs now. Wow. This I mean two Ghana CDs. Mm. And fried fish. Some people I hear if you buy it around East Ligon, it's three CDs and three CDs. <laughs> the location is everywhere. So it doesn't matter, like you said, no, no other plus or location matters. Okay. And it says that but this this fish is too poor though. For somebody who's coming from the Volta region, why would I want to buy fish? This one, one city fifty pesos, now three CDs. Vincent. Well, clearly, the size of the fish even shows that um, the, the blue economy and our, and, and, and our aqua <laughs> resources are feeling the pinch oh, of Oh, gosh, of Vincent. Well. <laughs> okay, but the loaf of bread, because in the worst scenario, you can just get a big loaf of bread, and you and your family can just have it, and you can drink water in it. But now, if you cannot afford the loaf of bread, what would we do then? Because this size, which was 10 cities, is now 15 cities. Wow. Which one of you likes bread, Pa? Well, I try and limit my consumption as far as bread is concerned. And stay with the akle and the tilapia. Yeah, traditional. Mm. Okay, now even some people say 17 Ghana cities. Yeah. Now, Peter, I say, I bet anything. Well, you're graduates. You bet anything, you're And pure, I mean, for the pure times, being back and forth, you know, with all the stakeholders thinking that 20 pesos to 30 pesos. Uh, uh, it's, it's quite surprising that mm. today, 10 pesos, 20 pesos is almost useless. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do anything with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. that's true. Yeah, yeah, and now sachet water is, is just 30, pesos. 30, 40 pesos, yeah, yeah, depending on. But electricity, hmm. okay, everybody says, mm -hmm. hmm, let me take your comments on that. Then mm -hmm. you already touched on petrol, so let me just take your comments on the electricity <laughs> okay. in wrapping up. Well, clearly, there has to be um, a problem when it comes to management of, of, of that particular sector. 
we're not quite sure whether it has to do with being able to ensure the institution is getting all the funds it should, it, it, or if a government, government says is, that it's doing. The last time they gave about six million to ECG, so they say they're doing their best. The, the, the challenge is on ECG not being able to collect. Especially within the more cosmopolitan areas of our country, it's crippling businesses, mm -hmm. it's affecting um, households, it's almost an expenditure you can't quite avoid. And I believe that the Ghanaian people are being held ransom um, to an economic catastrophe at the moment where you can't quite escape it. And the reality seems to get much darker by the day. I've um, held the view that our political stability really depends on our ability to manage the economy properly. And things like electricity um, tend to turn, rub people off the wrong way, especially when it's something that you can't quite avoid if you're trying to modernize, if you're trying to you know, maintain your household, and you're just trying to enjoy a, you know, a bright, fresh civilization where we shouldn't really be having some of these problems. When you look at the sort of expertise um, that you can find in, in, in government, when you look at the human capacity um, of, of the current government, look at the resources, you don't quite see that translating into those actions. And you question yourself and ask that, do we really um, have a situation where the government may be bankrupt, bankrupt on ideas to the point where even entrepreneurs are not getting the support they need to help get this country back on track. Right. It looks like one issue is cutting across management. Uh, Peter, thank you so much. We've been talking to Peter Kofi Kelsen Akins. He's a graduate and he's a youth activist. There's so much to talk about. Peter, I promise I'll bring you back. We'll pick up on this conversation. Yeah, sure. Okay. It'll All right, and uh, Vincent, it's been real pleasure talking Absolute to pleasure. you. I hope that uh, people can understand and appreciate the situation. We've been talking to Vincent Jacoto. He's an entrepreneur, blogger, and more especially CEO of DKT. Thank you so much. We also spoke to uh, uh, Rose Blankson, who is a former teacher, who's also had to switch jobs just to be able to, you know, survive in this economy. Thank you for doing this with us on Prime Morning. My name is Emma Fakosiadeti. Whatever it is, you need to stay well. And so good living comes up. Stay. <laughs>